types of flow sensors which are used in your NSHM machine. Auto air annulator, variable orifice, rotating vanet, van type of and D-like type of sensor. Now variable orifice type of flow sensor are majority time used in many NSHM machine including Barrow's NSHM machine. They are essentially a flap is covering an opening in a valve and when gas passes through that, that flap opens up and the pressure difference is created on both sides of this flap. Because of flow, this opens up and there is a pressure difference is created on two sides of this flap, which is measured and then that gives you a flow sense. It can be positioned at inspiratory or expiratory or many in a, many in a session machine it is present at both inspiratory and expiratory and, and some sensors are like D-light sensors are also having a gas analysis facility, so they are routinely placed at either expiratory end or at the patient end. Now, many NSHA machines, this type of flow sensor is one problem. One problem that because of humidification, there could be water condensation and if that water condition, condensation goes to this tube on either side of that flap, it will give you error. It will give you a wrong result. It can actually do a lot of it malfunctioning and your machine may stop that. So it is important that you try to avoid humidification, you try to use HME filter and this is more important especially if you are using it at the patient end. So you always use HME filter before uh, uh, rather after the sensor to avoid the uh, uh, what you call uh, this excessive water droplet entering into the sensor. Now, Drecker uses hot wire anemometer. Essentially, what is hot wire anemometer? It is, there are two tungsten or platinum uh, rods are there. They are heated electronically. And this heating, when the flow passes, will lose its some temperature. So, these rods are heated and when flow passes, it will lose some temperature. And this reduction in temperature is measured and on that basis, you are given the flow. So, hot wire anemometer in PBS, it is placed in expiratory limb. Relative cooling is proportional to the flow and it is uh, many times in these two machines, it is only used for the measured delivery of expiratory volume. It is not used for any type of compensation. So, you have to sense test the flow meter and uh, test that it is functionally well so that when it is when uh, the flow and the leak and compliance test uh, leak and compliance volumes are actually uh, compensated. Now there is also one extra uh, uh, thing which you have to do in when you, when you are using using Fabius machine. I'm not sure of the name which is used in other country of the Fabius machine. So in India it is Fabius machine. Now in Fabius machine. There is a button called desk compensation on and off. How many of you probably are aware about it? In my past uh, workshops, majority of them were not aware that there was desk compensation on and off. What is the function of that? Now, in uh, Drager Fabius, there is hot wire anemometer. So it is a cooling proportional. The proportional cooling is used to identify the flow sensing. Now we know that desk fluorine is an heated agent and it gives you a slightly different temperature. So if you don't make desk compensation on when you are using desk fluorine, it may give you slightly different value. If you are not used so far, try this next time. You will realize that it gives you slightly a different tidal volume value. So if you are using in a smaller patient, the tidal volume, volume values may be more important and you should know the right value. So it is always better to make it on if you are using desk fluorine in a Fabius machine. Hypoxia guard, hypoxic gas mixture delivery is a problem which is there since the inception of anesthesia machine. There are many reasons it was happening and we kept on adding the safety features, spin index system, cylinder coloring, color coding, nitrous cutoff, position of oxygen flow meter, 
diameter index safety system, non-interchangeable screw thread. There are so many mechanisms we have added to avoid hypoxic gas mixture delivery, but none of them are fail safe. So we finally added what? A hypoxia guard. There are two types of a system. On a regular system, you get oxygen ratio con controller, which is a pneumatic interfer interface. While in case of other <coughs> machines, <coughs> it is mechanical integration. So one limits nitrous oxide flow and other automatically increase oxygen flow with the nitrous when you start the nitrous oxide. Are you sure that there are no chances of hypoxia with use of hypoxic guard? I would allow to use pole, but right now I have not set it. So we'll go ahead. So can we deliver hypoxia guard with uh, can we deliver hypoxic gas with hypoxia guard? Yes, it is possible because both systems do not check whether you have set the oxygen or a nitrous. So if you say if you connected nitrous oxide cylinder in oxygen oxygen system, it is still possible that you are delivering nitrous oxide because it does not check whether you are delivering oxygen or nitrous. Third case is not part of a system. So just tomorrow observe what is happening when you start air with oxygen. Oxygen will you can give hundred percent of air also in spite without starting the oxygen or nitrous. So third case is not part of a system. Leak after hypoxia guard and defective mechanical or pneumatic system can still deliver hypoxia guard. So only fail safe system is FIO2 monitor. That is the only fail safe system. If you really want to avoid problem, use oxygen FIO2 monitoring. Now we'll, uh, we'll also understand a basic ventilator technology which is used in the NSHA machine. Here it is a system with Essentially, what is a ventilator? It is it is a system which generates precise amount of flow or gas movement in the circuit so that adequate amount of volume is delivered. So it has to create or generate a air flow into the system, and the air flow should be sufficient to deliver adequate tidal volume. Now there are four types of ventilators which are there in a majority of the NSHA machines which are used in the world. One is called piston. Other is called bellows technology, which is essentially called ascending bellow. There is also a turbine, which is uh, which was essentially an ICU technology and a volume reflector. So first we look at the ascending bellows. So all bellows machines are nowadays, their behavior in expiration is considered, on that basis we are giving name ascending bellows. Bellows is essentially a bag in a bottle type of system. So in a bottle there is there are bellows. Inside of the bellows is connected with the fresh gas flow and the circuit flow, and outside of the outside of that uh, bellows are connected to a dry gas. So dry gas essentially is delivered into that bottle, which is which compresses the bellows, and the patient gas or fresh gas flow and patient uh, gases are delivered to the patient. So here. Dry gas needs to push the bellows. So dry gas and anesthetic gas, they never mix. So bellows type of technology will require an additional system. So either some machine uses oxygen or some machine uses air also. But you need to supplement air or oxygen to compress the bellows. They don't take part in the anesthesia. They are just used for the compression of the bellows. Now, many, many anesthesia machine, you will see an additional tube like this going to the bellows. This bad tube is for the drive gas. Here, there it pushes through the absorber and then it is delivered to the patient. Now, during ex expire, expiration, the expired gases fills up the bellow with the fresh gas flow. Now, to, to elevate these bellows against gravity in during expiration, you need some amount of resistance. So there is a some amount of resistance are, is created in the bellows, which will give you some amount of heat. So all bellows anesthesia machine, you will always see some amount of heat being delivered. Even if you have set peep at zero, when you look at the peep, if your anesthesia machine is showing it, you will see two to four peep in your patient. You always see this is called internal peep, and this is because of technology where bellows needs to uh, for filling up the barrel, you need some amount of PV inside. So, problem of barrel system, you need drive gas, and if uh, if you are using oxygen, it would be costly. 
there is fresh gas flow mixing in that line and we already seen what will happen so you need a flow sensor and there is a relative compensation and there could be intrinsic heat so all dragger machines many of dragger machines like previous and primers is using technology called piston piston is essentially a rolling disc inside a barrel which is moving with the electricity it does not require any drive gas and it moves according to your setting so movement is accurate and the delivery of tidal volume is accurate and we already know because of because of decoupling valve there is no mixing of fresh gas flow so whatever you have set can be very accurately delivered to the patient it does not require any intrinsic peep an expiration when bellows uh, piston is pulling the gas is delivered from the Uh, uh, from the reservoir as well as fresh gas so there is no baseline peep in the piston you don't need any driving gas or oxygen in case of oxygen failure there is a provision for air can be sucked in so in case of oxygen failure air can be sucked in your ventilation can continue of course your anesthetic agent will not be there and your oxygen will not be there but yes ventilation will continue for some time and it will give an alarm and this prevents barrel trauma with accident flush also which we already see now turbine is used in icu so it is part of a icu ventilator technology it generates a large quantity of flow with help it is just a fan which is rotating which creates flow so they are good for patient triggered breathing so when patient triggered breathing is needed in a spontaneous breathing patients pediatric patients when patient re trigger breathing is needed it quickly makes a rotation delivers the flow and during expiration the rotation is reduced so during expiration it rotates at a lower rate which will generate peep and will also continue to move flow into the system so when patient takes a breath patient takes a inspiration it can be easily triggered and the turbine can immediately start to give the ventilation so turbine ventilation is very good it generates a very high peak flow rate it is suitable for all age group and for all spontaneous move ventilation but there is no decoupling mechanism in turbine so juice machine which is turbine driven and there one more machine is turbine driven it does not have decoupled valve there is no decoupling the back behavior will be different if you are using juice or pulse juice which has a turbine ventilator and the uh, uh, you have a similar fashion as we are seeing it in spontaneous ventilation so bag will inflate and deflate with the respiration but it is it is opposite to what is happening with fabius or primers there is one more technology volume reflector which is used in a maquette machine here driving gas instead of a bellow there is a long tube now this long tube directly communicate with the patient's circuit so oxygen is pushed it will push the flow now this is called a oxygen rich circuit because here there is mixing of fresh gas flow with drive gases there is a need of drive gases which will push the oxygen flow but there is a mixing of both and in case of leak or insufficient oxygen in the system this drive gas oxygen can be used and this will prevent hypoxia so it is oxygen rich design so if i compare two major technology which are which is used in today's anesthesia machine bellows and piston uh, fresh gas compensation is by flow sensing while in piston it is by the decoup decoupling technology which is absolute flush to never be used in bellow you can use it in piston but you always be aware that you may dilute the anesthetic agent gas volume definitely bellows start losing height it is easy to identify difficult not to notice when in case of piston the gas volume deficiency will see your bag getting deflected and you have to be really instruct your assistant not to silence the alarm and go ahead because it can draw air and it can deliver so you may actually not notice for some period so it is very important that you should always look at the alarms pre testing is not provided in many machines so it may not have compliance or comp it may not have compensation or it can have a dynamic compensation in case of bellows technology while piston it is pre testing is must and if you don't do pre testing it will not compensate for leak or compress 
oxygen consumption many machines use is oxygen as a dry gas and oxygen consumption is needed for the bellows technology while piston technology only oxygen consumed which is given to the patient as a fresh gas flow no additional oxygen is consumed both machines as sensors which are different technology and they they have their own problems but technological innovation has allowed a precise delivery of tidal volume in majority of the machine but piston by its sheer design can deliver more accurate now these are the issues which we have found with your machines other than what we already discussed you sometimes need higher flow bellow starts falling in spite of the uh, you know system which you already know awareness in spite of adequate ventilation machine stops were skin in fact there are various other things also can go wrong with your anesthesia machine and if you see the literature there are various things which are there are problems with apl valve circuit and everything so the solution to malfunctions of component is very simple you do proper testing you do self testing and you understand the technology and you keep on looking for the problems never just silence the alarm keep on looking for the problem in fact a critical incident report concerning anesthesia equipment has very clearly identified that you need proper planning and implementation policy for failure and replacement of equipment you need complete set of backup equipment you should have power backup you must be competent to use it and you should check them pre periodically now last two slides uh, uh, one is scavenging system scavenging is very important scavenging is to collect is essentially a basically a collection and removal of vented anesthetic gases from operation theater so it does not pollute and does not give you problem it does not give pro or prevent problem to healthcare workers working in operation theater there are two types of uh, essentially scavenging system one is active where suction is directly applied and another is passive where a gas flow or gas which is going out of the system is passively flown out of the atmosphere it is routinely directly delivered to the atmosphere that is called the open interface active system where suction is applied you have to be more careful it can create problem because of excessive negative pressure or if there is a blockage it can create positive pressure in your system when in case of passive it will only create problem for the positive pressure negative pressure is not there okay uh, since this is a covid era one slide for what you need to do for the covid 19 patients or what you should do in covid 19 era use low flow one very important you should use two hme filter what here i mean is hme plus bacterial and viral filter and you have to use it at two end two places one is at the patient end and second is at the end of expiratory line so when where the gas is flowing into the machine you should have the second hme f either a bacterial or viral filter or hme f which has a bacterial viral facility agent sampling line should be distal to hme f so that it does not expose directly to the patient gas and you need scavenging so scavenging you can it is a very simple technology you just ask your engineer to identify from where you can do scavenging and it can be easily either passively or actively can be diverted out of the operation